Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video we're going to be talking about some Rep Paladin stuff finally. We're going to be talking about some builds, some talent builds, both single target and multi-target, as I am gearing up to make my Rep Guide, which will either come out next week, I can't guarantee that though, um, based on initial data from the raids and stuff like that, and from Mythic Plus, and then uh, it'll either come out next week or the week after. Um, last, um, in Shadowlands I did not wait uh, on the last raid tier, so like season three, uh, with Sepulcher, and there was some changes made that basically I had to do a follow-up video right away the next week. I'd like to avoid that if possible, although I can't, you know, I'm never going to be able to guarantee that I can avoid that, but, um, you know, I like it just to be a set guide, and then obviously if there is a huge tuning thing, that then obviously you make an update, but, um, you know, you'd rather not do it right away if possible, so it can kind of sit on its own. Um, but yeah, well, let's just go through and talk a little bit about these talents for this video here. Like I said, I'm gearing back up for that. So obviously I have my own opinions. I have my own thoughts, but I'd be stupid if I didn't go and look at, you know, what the community is saying, what, you know, what the other consensus opinions are and stuff like that. And, you know, I pretty much agree with mostly everything. There is a little bit of difference though, in what my experience is versus what some of these other things are. So we'll mention that as well, of course, and let's go ahead and... Uh, get started here. So in the bottom left, you know, someone can complain about this if they want to. My camera is blocking Seal of Order. I will have Seal of Order taken for everything. It's our strongest talent over here on the Paladin side. So Seal of Order, that's taken. Uh, for everything we're talking about, that's taken. Um, if you don't know how to use Dusk of Dawn, I made a video on that earlier, like in the beta, I think. Uh, pretty much goes over how Dusk and Dawn works. So you can watch that if you like. Um, and on this side, is it's pretty self-evident for single target. Uh, it is it is different for multi-target. Uh, things you might think that you want to take or something it would be a Seal of Alacrity, Divine Purpose. Those are obviously throughput talents. This pretty much, though, does the most. And this is pretty much standard. I was playing with this on beta as well. Um, this is uh, with one difference being Seraphin over Sanctified Wrath. Uh, Seraphin actually will simulate higher than Sanctified Wrath. Although, like with anything, if the simulation is within a few hundred or whatever DPS, you know, do what you want, essentially. You can follow the sim to the T, or you can be like, hey, it's close enough. I'm just going to play the way that's more fun for me. So I do have Seraphin selected down here over Sanctified Wrath because it is a little bit more powerful. Um, but yeah, nothing too weird here. I don't think I need to point out anything. Um, this is a, this is a single target, so this is more for a raid, right? If you were in Mythic Plus, you know you might want to get like cleanse toxins and stuff like that. But this is single target. Um, over here for single target side, this is where I don't. I, it's not that I disagree, because um, I've in practice it's fine, but I wish it was different. I would say. So um, key notes here: we do not have improved judgment taken. We do not have High Lord's judgment taken. I do believe those are takeable talents in a single target build we do have expert taken uh, over here um exorcism for single target i mean it just feels terrible i'm not gonna lie uh you do kind of want to throw it though it does it does do a, a good amount of extra damage over the course of a fight um it's just awkward to fit it in i kind of you know as far as that of uh, um move priority goes and i trust the guy who does the move priority bolas um, he says to use this before any of your spenders or whatever. Uh, it's like your highest priority just to use it and put it on cooldown essentially. You know, kind of like a dot, right? Like, kind of like a dot class. Um, so, and I kind of, and I agree with that, but I would say with the caveat of when your wings is not up. So if you can use a spender or builder when your wings is up, I generally would. Maybe I would use exorcism over like a crusader strike, right? During your wings. But generally speaking, because you're trying to maintain your Dusk and Dawn, because you're doing, putting everything into your wings, like normal as a Paladin, um, it feels really bad to press. So you almost want to uh, build the five. In my, This is just my opinion, right? We're just talking opinions here. This isn't a guide. Um, in my opinion, you kind of want to build the five and use your Exorcism, then pop wings after that. Um, that way your Exorcism gets on cooldown. You have 20 seconds. You know, The next time you need to press your Exorcism, your wings can be over. It's not a huge deal there. It just feels really bad to press during wings, especially with Crusade. Uh, we have Crusade taken, 
And uh, especially with Crusade, it just does not feel good. Um, some other points before we get to the bottom, which is where like the meat of the discussion is, is um, Shield of Vengeance here over Divine Protection. Obviously, for damage purposes, for DPS purposes, you'll want to take Shield of Vengeance. If you do not care about that, if you just want to be like the most competent player or whatever, uh, anytime where you're going to take, you know, a lot of different sources of damage in an eight second window. So that could be a boss fight where everyone in the raid takes big damage. And, you know, there's a good chance that you're going to have like a dot on you ticking as well at that same time. Um, and then maybe also the third thing could happen. Maybe you get a mechanic as well, right? An individual mechanic. And so, in that case, Divine Protection could easily be better, right? It's going to matter the amount of damage that's coming in over the 8 seconds. Does that get to the bigger damage than the Shield of Vengeance can absorb, right? So, uh, that's what you're factoring in there. And in raid encounters, there will be raid encounters where Divine Protection will do more defensively for you. But for damage purposes, uh, Shield of Vengeance will be the, the choice there. For a single target, we do take Ashes to Dust over Radiant Decree because obviously we do want to do more of the spenders. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Radiant Decree is a spender too, but we kind of just, you know, Templar's Verdict uh, as much as we can, uh, essentially. We do have Zeal, that's nothing major there. Uh, Inner Grace for single target, Sanctification for multi target. And then, like, where it comes a bigger deal, like I mentioned, I, I kind of, for my build, essentially, I, I'd have to look exactly. Oh, he also has, so the the consensus is to also take Sanctify, uh, which enemies hit by Divine Storm take a lot more damage from Consecration, and this actually is a good talent to take. It's not bad at all. Um, obviously, the issue is why you're pressing Divine Storm. Well, you're pressing Divine Storm because you have to take Empyrean Power, and Empyrean Legacy is also a very good talent down at the bottom as far as just, like, free damage. So your target is going to take divine storm damage randomly and so you can uh sanctify some people maybe even will because there's not a huge difference between our single and multi-target some people may even you know pack you know cast a divine storm to keep this debuff up to keep the consecration damage going i would say it's not super important in my personal like testing uh and i would say this talent isn't super important either uh it's just uh it, the way this build works it, it it's just the way it works right uh, I got Xperg there. So I basically take these three talents, Sanctify, Holy Crusader, and Xperg, and I put them into Improved Judgment and High Lord's Judgment. And I like to go down the right side here, and I'll talk about that a little bit. So uh, for this build, this is, again, this is like the theory crafted build. This is like the Raid Bots simulation build, right? So Relentless Inquisitor, very good legendary from Shadowlands. Basically, for this build, it's replacing Vanguard's Momentum. Vanguard's Momentum... Works a lot better with Zealot's Paragon, but Zealot's Paragon is, you know, not as strong as it used to be. So it's like not as synergetical than as it used to be. And then we go down instead of so instead of going Templar's Vindication into Final Verdict into Vanguard's Momentum, we grab this and then we grab these two, which is Virtuous Command, which is good, you know, similar to Templar's Vindication and Final Reckoning, which is similar to Final Verdict. Like it's it's very similar, and in my testing um like the dps is very similar as well right so like i haven't decided yet for sure but in my guide i think i might offer both of these talent builds and say choose one i i'll probably do a little bit more testing first but if anything my build i've done more damage single target with my build and that's what the caveat of is i am not using the api or whatever the set the move priority that they would use so when i'm running vanguard's momentum since i have two hammer of wrath anyways and i can reset hammer of wrath with final verdict i am spamming hammer of wrath whenever i can but to kind of synergize with zealot's paragon i'm also spamming judgment whenever i can so i would say like hammer of wrath is my number one priority and then judgment's my number two which then um sometimes i'm not casting blade of wrath as much obviously my i guess my number one would be a wake of ashes proc right for the three holy power um but if my just my blade of wrath procs i'm not as worried about it because it's not directly helping me obviously with expurg it's like giving you a little bit extra but i like to just spam the judgments and extend my wings as long as i can um while when doing that when i do it that way my way i would say um all my experience has been is that my single target DPS is the same or higher 
than this build. And in my opinion, my way to play is more fun. But if you like Final Reckoning and trying to like fit everything into that window where Final Reckoning is on your target or whatever, um, then this build's fine too. Uh, there could be tuning that changes. Uh, I guess my experience could be wrong uh, as well. But um, like I said, before I make a judgment on that with the actual guide, I will do some like further testing on it. But I did test this already. And like I said, if anything, honestly, mine was higher. So uh, it's maybe something to think about for you there. Uh, if you want to do a Final Verdict build or a Final Reckoning build. And the Final Reckoning build, you know, you more worry about the Consecration Holy Damage. You worry about Expurg and using your Blade of Wrath whenever you, po you possibly can. Whereas with Final Verdict, you're just worrying about pumping out Final Verdicts and extending your wings, essentially. That's, that's basically how I would describe it. As many Final Verdicts as possible. So you use your Wake of Ashes but also extending your wings, which for me puts the judgment over the Blade of Wrath. Even though it's another holy power, which is huge, right? It may sound counterintuitive, but that just slight extend on the wings um, is very helpful as well. And it has worth and it has weight as well. So that's something to think about. So that's where I'm at on single target. So again, mostly the same with everybody else, except for I do think there's another build and you know maybe it's only similar maybe it's like the same dps if you simulate it so like if you if you um you know have a character right now and you want to simulate it uh you'll you'll see that this build should sim about 2k higher than what i was just talking about but again i think that's because of the uh priority i think if you just if you could change the priority in it or whatever and change it to more what i was talking of course that that's only during your wings right because you don't care about spamming judgment if it's not extending your wings. So um, it is relying on that. But if you play it the way I play it, then it should be equal or higher than this build if you try it out. Uh, so it's just something to think about. You can try it out for yourself. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you have different uh, outcome than I have uh, had. But uh, I definitely prefer the final verdict build. So I'm, what I'm hoping for is that Zealot's Paragon or Final Verdict just get a buff like the talents themselves get like a buff and then it'll be an easy choice. That would be nice. So, um, there's that. So let's go ahead and talk about multi-target a little bit. Let's pull up. This is like the theory crafters AOE and <coughs> excuse me. So this is kind of like a mythic plus build. Um, this actually is not the theory crafter AOE, but, um, that's what I have it saved as. So we have, uh, so this is for Mythic Plus, right? So for this as well, what, what I might suggest doing is maybe taking out one of these um, horse abilities, either the double horse or the extended, and also grab Devo Aura. It could be useful just on a certain key or your group struggling. You're almost always going to want to use your aura to do more damage. But it could help out a group just to have Devo Aura available, and you're only losing horse, and horse isn't as important inside like a Mythic Plus. So you can just swap one of these out for Diva or no big deal. Uh, the biggest difference is we don't go down the right side. Um, the extending the wings isn't as important and seal of the crusader is not as important either because it's just your target. It's like, you know, it's not every target. It's only your target. So it's, that's a single target ability. Essentially we do grab hollow ground still on the right side, but then we just pick up everything in the middle here. Um, so we pick up that now what, what the actual theory build has is Seraphin taken here. Now, even in the simulation, so even in their API, when I simulate Sanctified Wrath, I get better outcomes. I assume that's because I'm simulating different than what they are. So for Mythic Plus, when it comes to simulating, what what the issue ends up being, the dungeon slice is crap. Uh, it just is. It doesn't. It's not a very good representation at all. What I like to simulate is how I'm doing on an average pull, right? Um, you know, and it depends on what you're running, right? If As you go higher in the season, pulls might last longer because the mobs have more health and whatnot. Um, but generally speaking, I was simulating uh, for 10 targets uh, on patchwork and for 40 seconds. So like a little bit past my wings time. Uh, and w in that case, Sanctified Wrath is much better. As you can imagine, since Sanctified Wrath is uncapped AOE, as you um, get more targets... Sanctified Wrath becomes better and better and better because it's never diminishing its damage. If you have 20 targets, then it's going to be even more better than Seraphin. Uh, what I'm assuming is that maybe at like five targets or something like that, 
that Seraphin's better. And we know that Seraphin's better for single target as well. So um, obviously there are single target bosses in the dungeons as well. When it comes to the retribution side, this is where I'm pretty much in full agreement completely with the theory side. So um, one thing I found interesting and that I kind of thought would be best is True Swake being taken here. Uh, it's not a very good talent, but it is an AoE talent and it does uh, you know, do some damage, obviously. So AoE talents are good to take. Uh, it's better than taking like another Judgment talent or something like that. So uh, True Swake's good to take there. I do have Radiant Decree taken. I've been a proponent of Ashes to Dust on AoE. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> it's still I still like it, it, but it's really like a pull-to-pull -pull basis, right? So if you get two procs of, of Wake of Ashes during a big pull, then wake then the ashes to dust is better but if you don't then like radiant decree is better so you're kind of like you know you're kind of like playing an rng game so ashes to dust can be better but it requires good rng whereas radiant decree is more reliable it's also um one one bad thing about it though is it's not as good for single target as uh, ashes to dust is as we talked about with the single target thing so just like uh, Sanctified Wrath is not as good for the bosses in a Mythic Plus. You know, the, the Radiant Decree isn't quite as good for the bosses in Mythic Plus either. So, you know, you have that to worry about. I think either of, either of them are fine. Like, you're not going to be trolling your Mythic Plus group if you pick Ashes to Dust over Radiant Decree. But Radiant Decree is fun to play. It's a new ability. A lot of people love it. Even talking bad about it, people <laughs> do not like that at all. Uh, so... Um, I have been playing it myself just to try it out and it is, you know, it's, it feels good. It's a really strong ability. I personally just do not see a big difference between, uh, ashes to dust. Although we haven't done mythic plus yet, we're doing literally mythic zeros. Um, so maybe because we're pulling bigger and stuff like that, I don't know. I don't know what the, the reasoning is behind it, but, um, yeah, I, I've, I've found them to be very similar. And then if I have good RNG, I find Ashes to Dust to be better, but, you know, I'm trying to hang in there on Radiant Decree. I agree with everybody that, like, numbers, there must be bugs with it, I assume. Maybe people know this, and I don't know this. Is there bugs with Radiant Decree or something like that? Because if you if you just go by the numbers, I do believe it should be better. But my actual experience in-game, like, with the, and then breaking it down on details, um, has not been that it's, like, this significantly better thing. Uh, coming down here, uh, you know... Uh, we take the obvious talents down here. Relentless Inquisitor. This is one that, you know, you could technically put these points somewhere else. But Relentless Inquisitor, again, it's a solid legendary from from Shadowlands. So just taking it can be good. Um, haste, obviously, it depends what your haste is at. Later on in the expansion, it might be worth it to take some other random talents or whatever. Uh, but right now, especially early in expansion, it's, it's quite good to take. And then the normal things here. You're going to Final Reckoning because it's... Uncapped AoE, and you're going to Divine Toll because it's five targets, full Holy Power, and then, you know, normal stuff here. Uh, I do have Crusade over Might once again. I do think there is some value for Might as well, and it's not as big of a difference. But once they've made Crusade two minutes instead of three, it's pretty much going to be taken in most cases. <laughs> um, pretty much probably for the entire expansion unless they change something up uh, completely, so... Again, not much of a descent here for me. Uh, a little bit on the Radiant Decree thing, even though I am playing with Radiant Decree. Like I, I like I like the button too. I like to press it too. My actual experience is that it's not much different than the other choice, but I am playing with Radiant Decree. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty pretty standard. I think everyone could probably make this AOE build without any help. Um, maybe one mistake people would make on the left side here is going and getting Zealous Paragon, but you know it's just not needed. You can just go down and grab all the stuff in the center. And it'll be a little bit better for you. Again, it depends how you simulate it yourself. But Sanctified Wrath, in my opinion, superior for as long as long as you're pulling semi big. I don't know where the exact number of targets would be, but as long as you're pulling somewhat big, like I said, I simulated ten targets. Um, you know, as long as you're pulling somewhat big, Sanctified Wrath is going to be superior than Seraphin. But if you're not, if you're pulling one pack at a time, then Seraphin very well might be better. So. Um, that you can simulate that yourself in the way that you like to simulate. Maybe you like Dungeon Slice. Maybe you're like, Dungeon Slice is close to my DPS that I do in a dungeon. Um, in that case, simulate Dungeon Slice, and you'll probably get the Seraphins better. So, um, 
that's just my opinion again my experience and that's all i can do is try to help everybody out with that so uh, that's it for this one guys voice is going a little bit here i had to take a break even in the middle of this uh, but i did want to talk about some of this stuff because i've been like i said I'm, i've dove back into it and i'm going over everything and trying to be prepared for my guide which i put a lot of value in and care a lot about so um as always i do ask you to please subscribe to the channel helps me out a lot and other than that everybody have a good one